Hey YouTube, how's it going? Yak Science here with another OCHEM video. Today's going to be the first of many videos on the topic of alkene reactions, okay? It's a huge topic. It's probably going to take up the next 10, maybe more videos. Uh, specifically, we're going to be talking about hydration, which is one type of alkene reaction. But before we get into that, I want to talk about alkene reactions in general. So most of the alkene reactions you're going to learn uh, in your OCHEM course are addition reactions. And what we mean when we say addition is the following. We have an alkene right here. We react it with some compound, let's call it XY. And we add the X and Y across the pi bond and eliminate the pi bond. Okay? So you can almost think of it as the opposite of elimination, right? With elimination, we were forming a pi bond by removing things. Here, we're getting rid of a pi bond by adding things, right? So let's just dive in. We're going to talk about three types of hydration reactions, acid-catalyzed hydration, oxymercuration, demercuration, and hydroboration oxidation. Uh, that's a mouthful, uh, but, but with enough practice, uh, you're going to get it, I promise. So here's the game plan. For each of these three, we're going to talk about A, if it's regiospecific or not, whether it follows Markovnikov's rule or not, we'll talk about all that, or, uh, and, sorry, is it stereospecific, right? Do the X and the Y, do they add sin to each other, anti to each other, or does it not matter uh, and there is no stereospecificity? Uh, so let's go right in, talking about first acid-catalyzed hydration of alkenes. Okay, so here we have an alkene in the presence of acid and water. And what we don't normally think about is the fact that an alkene can actually be nucleophilic. It is nucleophilic because it's a source of electron. So the pi bond in the presence of the acid, can act as a nucleophile, while the proton acts as an electrophile. Let's see how that happens. So we have also our sulfuric acid right here. The nucleophilic pi bond will grab this hydrogen, because it's a very strong acid, send those electrons over to oxygen. And now, by the way, I'm going to show you the mechanism first, then talk about it. So here's what happens. Take my word for it, then we're going to talk about why. Okay, so we're here. And we have to protonate one of these carbons. We can't protonate both, right? There's one hydrogen available. So I'm going to tell you right off the bat that it's this carbon that gets protonated. We'll talk about why later. What does that mean? That means this carbon must be a carbocation, right? Because we deprived both of these of the pi bond. Only one of them got the replacement for the pi bond, the hydrogen. The other one's lacking. So it's a carbocation, very unstable. Uh, though not too unstable because this is a tertiary carbocation. Okay, so what happens? We have water in solution, H2O, right? Nucleophilic will attack that carbocation. That leaves us here with oxygen with three bonds, so plus one formal charge. So finally, deprotonation of one of these hydrogens will get us to the answer. That'll be done via another water molecule. And now we can get to our answer. Now let's stop for a minute and talk about this. Notice that we really did hydrate this alkene. We started with a pi bond. We no longer have a pi bond. What did we add across the pi bond? We added an OH and an H. So essentially we added a unit of water across the pi bond, and that is the definition of hydration. All three of these will result in adding an OH and an H across the pi bond. Where they differ is in terms of regiospecificity, they differ in terms of the mechanism, of course, and they differ in terms of stereospecificity. So let's talk about regiospecificity first. Notice that when, when it came time to protonate this molecule, I said that it protonates this carbon and not this carbon. That's because this uh, reaction mechanism, right, acid-catalyzed hydration, follows Markovnikov's rule. Markovnikov's rule basically states that in electrophilic addition, which is what this is, the electrophile will attack so that you, you end up with the most stable carbocation. That's one way to think of it. So which of these two should be protonated? The one with the more hydrogens, right? This one. Because the one with less hydrogens, the more, the more substituted, the higher substituted carbon, is preferred for the carbocation placement. We don't want a carbocation here. That would be secondary, right? Tertiary, much more favored. So this carbon gets uh, the, uh, the proton, right? The hydrogen. Okay, so now we know that acid-catalyzed hydration of alkenes is regiospecific and it follows Markovnikov's rule. 
Some of the, some of the other reactions we'll learn are anti-Markovnikov. We'll get into that. In terms of stereospecificity, this one's kind of easy because remember going back to SN1, the carbocation made it not stereospecific because it gives us a racemic mixture. Same thing here. In this case, we don't have a stereo center, so I can't illustrate that point. But because of the presence of a carbocation, there is no stereospecificity associated with this mechanism. So acid-catalyzed uh, acid catalyzed hydration of alkenes is not stereospecific. So just to sum up, it is regiospecific. It follows Markovnikov's rule. It is not stereospecific. Now let's move on to the second type of hydration, oxymercuration, demercuration. Okay, so this is the basic setup for oxymercuration, demercuration. Uh, it looks a little bit intimidating, but don't worry about it. We see here an alkene, and we have two steps, right? Unfortunately, you have to memorize all of these reagents. So multi-step, first step, we have HgOAC2 and water. Second step, we have NaBH4, remember the reducing agent, NaOH and H2O. Now let's see how uh, this results in hydration, results in adding a unit of water across this pi bond. Okay, so here I drew our HgOAC2. The nucleophilic pi bond, right, is going to grab this Hg. We don't really need to know the mechanism from here. Uh, teachers typically just want to see the transition, transition state or the intermediate, sorry, not transition state, the intermediate, uh, and it looks like this. Okay, so notice that now uh, a closed ring was formed between the carbons and the HgOAC. By the way, I forgot to do something here. Uh, as the nucleophilic pi bond attacks the Hg, one of these OACs leaves. Sorry about that, I forgot to include that. That's why you only see one OAC here and not two. Okay, so now from this closed ring, what happens next? We have water floating around, right? <clears throat> so water will attack <clears throat> this carbon right here. We'll talk about why later. And that'll open the ring, right? So where does that leave us? So now we're here, right? We have water attached to this carbon with a plus charge because it has three bonds, and we have our HgOAC here. Next, let's just simply deprotonate this water real quick, and then we'll get into the nitty gritty of what happens. So deprotonate that hydrogen right there. That gets us here. Okay, so now we're here. Oxygen has been deprotonated, and now there's one thing left to do. We don't have to know the mechanism for this step, typically in OCHEM courses, but here's what it looks like. So in the presence of NaBH4 and H2O, sorry, right, let's just write that, NaBH4, that's a B, sorry, my handwriting's terrible, and H2O, we're going to get to our product. Okay, so this is our product right here. Let me kind of confusing let me outline it real quick okay that's our product right here notice a couple things uh, we didn't show the full mechanism but you got to trust me on this uh, this is this follows Markovnikov's rule as well we have the OH on the more substituted carbon uh, so regiospecific yes stereospecific unlike acid catalyzed hydration oxymercuration demercuration is stereospecific Notice that the OH and the H, it was this H that was added, right? This one right here. Notice that the OH and the H are anti to one another. So uh, oxymercuration, demercuration reactions involve stereospecificity in that the two added groups are anti to one another, right? They point in opposite directions. So finally, let's talk about the third type of hydration, hydroboration oxidation. Okay, so this is the basic setup for uh, hydration via hydroboration oxidation. Again, kind of a confusing set of reagents you have to memorize for test day, but it's two steps just like oxymercuration, demercuration. First, BH3 and THF, and then second, H2O2, NaOH, and H2O. Here we have an alkene. Once again, this, this carbon is more substituted than this one because of its methyl. So let's see how these two interact. Uh, and by the way, just like before, you don't really have to know the mechanisms for these, typically, unless your teacher says otherwise. Uh, but I know most OCHEM uh, courses don't require the mechanism for this, just which reagents get you to which products and intermediates. So here we go. So first step, this, this uh, alkene reacts with BH3 and THF to give us this intermediate. 
Okay, so now we have the intermediate here. Notice BH2 instead of BH3. So what happens next, this will interact with H2O2, NaOH, and H2O right the second step and give us this final product. All right, that's what the final product looks like. Sorry I didn't draw it up here. Um, but just know that this is the final product. I probably should have drawn it over here. Uh, but let's take a look at re regiospecificity and stereospecificity. This was the H that was added. This was the OH that was added. So yes, it is hydration. We added a unit of water across the pi bond. But where are they in relation to each other? They are sin to each other. So is there stereospecificity in hydroboration oxidation? Yes, it is sin addition. So oxymercuration was anti-addition. Hydroboration oxidation is sin addition. Now in terms of Markovnikov, does this look like Markovnikov to you? No, right? With these two, which were Markovnikov, the OH ended up on the more substituted carbon. Here, <clears throat> The OH is on the less substituted carbon, and therefore, uh, it is anti-Markovnikov, okay? All right, and just to conclude sort of a, a summary of everything we talked about, acid-catalyzed hydration uh, of alkenes is a regiospecific. Yes, it is. It follows Markovnikov's rule. I wrote Mark just to be kind of quick. Uh, is it stereospecific? No, remember, because we get a racemic mixture. Uh, oxymercuration, demercuration. Is it regiospecific? Yes, it is, and it follows Markovnikov's rule. Is it stereospecific? Yes, it involves anti-addition, right? The H and the OH have to be anti to each other. And finally, hydroboration oxidation, is it regiospecific? Yes, it is anti-Markovnikov. Is it stereospecific? Yes, the H and the OH have to add sin to each other, right? On the same side, essentially. Okay, so that's uh, hydration. That's an intro to alkene reactions. I know it's a lot, but I really hope uh, that that helped.